In this video, I'm going to show you how to install collar ties in your attic. I'm also going to explain why you should have them if you don't already. And we're going to do it right now. So I'm up in my attic right now, and today I want to talk about collar ties. Uh, so let's talk about the basic structure of a house first. Normal, typical house, wood construction, of course. Um, you have your outside walls all the way around that come up evenly. And then you have your ceiling joist or floor joist, depending on how many floors you have. Um, but we're gonna talk about the top floor, the attic. Um, so these are ceiling joists. They sit on top of the outside walls and go across here. Usually the joists are broken down here uh, under a main supporting wall. Then you have your roof rafters that sit on top of the outside wall and come up here to a ridge. This is a ridge and they are sandwiched right here. So to hold all this together, typically you put the ceiling joists and attach them to the roof rafters and then that prevents the walls from bowing out. And then they're tied into that main wall there or also the other ceiling joists that come over this way. In my case, they actually ran the ceiling joists all the way across, uh, and that is what is holding the walls from bowing out, or going in in some cases. But another thing that should be done is collar ties. Like this one single piece right here um, is a good representation of a collar tie, I guess, uh, or where it should be. Although, it should be lower and it should be bigger. Typically, they're installed the top third of the, the roof rafters. And what they do is they prevent this, these right here, these roof rafters from separating at the ridge due to wind uplift or uneven loads such as snow loads. Uh, it's my belief as well that this also helps the roof rafters from not spreading this way and if there's an uneven load it will help to balance that load in between the roof rafters that it's attached to making the overall structure stronger so this is part of the living room remodel down here and i have my my lvl that we're going to use at a later date and if you haven't been following definitely subscribe and follow along because this thing down here is going to be completely different but today I'm installing collar ties. So that's kind of why you want collar ties, just overall structural integrity of the house. Now I know when you install these, you really limit the amount of space that you can have. And I know a lot of people hate that. My plan here is I'm not gonna have any storage. I know it's a lot of room and I can store some light things in here, maybe some long pieces of extra baseboard heat or some lumber, nothing too crazy though. Um, but I have all of this storage down here and I really, I'm trying, at this point in my life, I'm trying to not acquire so many things. So yes, it does eliminate some storage, you know, with head height, you can't just walk in here because I'm gonna be putting mine at about this level. And that's another thing to determine. Like I said, you want to be in the upper third of your roof rafters. So I've decided to make my collar ties about five feet long. And when you measure five feet here, that will be the long point. These are the boards I'm gonna be using for the collar ties. These are one by eight by, I got 16 footers. Uh, they're one by eight and they're called either ledger board or utility board or springboard. They're called a bunch of different things, but these are actually one inch by eight inch, whereas a lot of lumber is like, you know, three quarter by seven and a quarter. This is actually one inch by eight inch. Uh, so this is what I'm gonna be using for my collar ties. An easy way to calculate the angle that you're gonna wanna cut the ends of this at is if you take a level instead of calculating pitch and all that stuff, figuring out what pitch your roof is, you can take a level 
put it up top here. What the hell was that? Coda, you okay, bud? Did you get scared? Did that scare you? <laughs> Did that scare you? Yeah, it's okay. Wow. Windy day. Hope my roof doesn't blow off without collar ties. Hold it right there where it's level. And then you can take an angle finder. And put your angle finder on here. And tighten this up. Might need like six hands to do this. Now you have your angle here. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna be holding collar ties away eh, probably three quarters of an inch, something like that, because you don't want it to rub on the uh, decking. And then you check that on the other side. And that's good. Now we can cut our pieces. Board and I mark my angle like this. Continue it by framing square. mark five feet here if I feel like this is too long I'll just cut it a little more after I kind of put it up there in place and see how it looks mark my angle and as a tip you can cut one of these and if you're happy with the length then you can use that piece as a template Test fit my piece. Yeah, the angle's a little off, but that looks good. So I'm happy with that. So I can cut all my pieces. Now, these roof rafters are 24 inch on center. If you have 16 inch on cent center, you can typically do every other rafter. But since these are 24 on center, which means the distance from the center of this rafter to the center of this rafter is 24 inches. If they're 16, like I said, which is common, then you can do every other roof rafter. I'm gonna do every one. Here's a quick tip for you. <clears throat> Before you go measuring these and cutting the angle all uh, at different times, once you get one cut and you know how many you need, you can use this as a pattern, which means you flip it here. And also, as long as you have a good cut here, that angle, and these don't have to be perfect. They're not, um, they're not for looks or anything. They're for structure. So you can set up your pattern right here at the edge and then go down there, mark it, cut it, and then flip it do the same thing make sure you mark the pattern with some pencil or something so you know it's a pattern because if you just cut this and then cut this one and use that it's like making a copy of a copy of a copy eventually it's going to be different so i'm going to cut all my uh collar ties the same time to install the collar ties now you don't have to put anything right here. If you were doing a ceiling up here, then you would want a nailer here, but this is strictly for structural uh, purposes. So I'm gonna start my first one here where the two rafters meet. The first two rafters meet right here. And I'm actually gonna take this piece off. So it's gonna be replaced. And I'm gonna put something up right away. first piece and put it like I said <clears throat> you put it about 
half inch, three quarters away from the actual roof plywood for decking. And then get your four foot level. And maneuver it to where it's level, which is about right there. Now you can kind of stand back and make sure you're good before you go putting all the other ones in. It's actually not the worst height in the world for an attic. If I wanted to store some stuff up here, I could, uh, but that's not really my goal. My goal is to make the house structurally sound. So that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and nail it off. Now, when it comes to putting the rest of the pieces in here and knowing where they should go, what you can do is take your level and hold it on the edge there and then get it to where it's level here and then mark right there and then do the same thing on the opposite side. Mark it right here, put it on your lines, make sure it's level on the bottom and nail it off and just do that the whole way. But I'm gonna cheat. And here's how I'm gonna cheat with my Wokeline laser level. I actually did a product review on this thing and it's awesome. And it is absolutely perfect for this. So I lined the laser up to the bottom of that collar tie. And now I can see all the way around exactly where I wanna put the rest of them. Now, as I walk here, the laser's gonna bounce, but you can see, I might have to move this up just a bit, but there's my line and then I can find where my next one goes and where my next one goes. And the next one is just super handy. So like I said, I'm gonna cheat. You could do it where you can measure here and or level there and do it that way or you can measure the same height off of here to here if you want to do it that way mark it down here and then snap a chalk line that works too but this just makes it way easier for me so that's what i'm gonna do There we go, all set. I'm just doing this area for now because this is what I'm ripping apart and um, I need to add this for the structure. Uh, you know, I can continue them down this way, but for right now, this is all I need. That's it. It's really not that difficult. And this thing makes it a ton easier. And I'll leave a link in the description uh, where you can buy this thing if you're interested. That also means I get a small referral commission, helps support this channel. Uh, and I would not steer you wrong, I love this thing. And this is just one of the many awesome uses for this thing. If you wanna see more of my content, you can click here and here-ish and go check it out. If you haven't subscribed yet, definitely subscribe if you enjoy this channel and check out my other links in the description to my Facebook page, Instagram, and my Patreon page, which helps support this channel. I appreciate it as always. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.